This roof has exceeded its useful lifespan. I don't know how well you can see that, but the roof is supposed to look like this area right here, right? Most of it. This is probably a southward facing slope, right? And it's getting the brunt of solar energy all day long, every day. It might even be southwest, could even be a, a western facing, but probably more a south facing. It's pretty, pretty common. Um, the shingles are falling off. They're so deteriorated. You can see the little black spots right here. Those are, it's kind of like a little line of like a, a, like a dash line, right? Right there. That's part of the seal strip from the shingle above it, from the tab above it, All right? This is an old roof. I can, if I pull up on this roof, I'm a little bit happy because I think I'm probably going to be able to find a way to total it, right? Even just right here, I see some shingles that are sliding down right? You know, wind, hail, it's almost impossible to sit here and say that hail didn't cause some kind of damage to this. When you're at insurance house, there is, I don't know of an insurance company and that doesn't mean that there isn't one uh, or an IA firm that's going to say, well, this roof is too old. You can't pay for it. Even though it's got, it has some hail damage to it. I don't think that that's a thing. That's the, I've never encountered that. It's always been, man, if that thing's falling apart, you just appreciate it, you know, up to the limit, whatever our limit is. A lot of insurance companies will say 75, 85% um, and then move on down the road, right? Here is another very old roof. This roof is kind of, um, this roof might not be that old if it wasn't properly ventilated. Um, because the shingles will do this. And this is an organic shingle, by the way, uh, which we're going to talk about here. Um, the shingles will do this kind of curl up thing uh, when they the roof isn't properly ventilated and they get too hot, right? Even in like milder latitudes of in North America, in the north, even in like Canada, you're gonna you can see stuff like this because in the summertime it still gets up to 140 degrees on those shingles, you know. Um, this is also an organic shingle and you can tell, um, there's a number of reasons why these, only these shingles here might be doing this versus the ones right next to it. Could be that this is a defective shingle, right? Or it could be that there is a, um, right off camera over here. There's a, uh, a edge of a dormer and there's a gutter that dumps water right here right? Might do it. There could be a tree hanging over it. Who knows? It's hard to know without standing up on the roof and looking at the whole thing, right? This is also an organic shingle. So kind of the way to tell the difference between the organic and the fiberglass. And organic is, is something, it's basically felt, asphalt impregnated felt versus asphalt impregnated fiberglass is that they're a lot thicker and they're going to curl up like this. Fiberglass won't curl. A fiberglass shingle looks just like what it is, right? Fiberglass. So it's, this is a kind of scuffed off um, granules on here. And you can see kind of the white or light gray. That's what the, the fiberglass looks like when the UV radiation, the, you know, the solar radiation from the sun kind of beats down on it for a, a season or two or three seasons. And you can see here on the edge, a little bit of that. This is footfalls up here, right? This is not hail damage. Um, this is just what an older fiberglass shingle looks like. It, it may be not a very good shingle, maybe a little bit, it could be defective, you know, it lost its granules early, but you can see that the granules are there to protect this, the, the matting of the shingle, which is the main part of the shingle, is what makes the shingle the shingle. Everything else is, a, is applied to that matting, right? Even on a roof like this, if you have, and when we see it later, um, if you have real hail damage on it, it'll be big black spots and they'll be soft because there's still asphalt that, that's fresh under there that's been protected by the granules. Here's another old one, right? These, I mean, these again, these are home runs, right? This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at HagueEducation.com. This one's got wind damage here. This one, has it's been repaired 
at least twice, right there and right there, up, up, up higher, right? If you come across a roof like this, and this is just a little bit of inside baseball for you, um, if you come across a roof that's clearly, I mean, it's a gazillion years old, it's way, way, way past its useful lifespan, and you know, you're like, how am I even gonna find hail damage on this thing? Number one, that roof is not repairable under any circumstances, except under the most egregious, awful, bad faith carrier, which, I mean, good luck finding one of those. Or maybe there's they're all over the place, who knows? Everybody I've ever worked for, take one look at that, that's absolutely not repairable. You can't, you can, you can't even lift a shingle to, to slide another shingle in or pull another shingle out without it just break crumbling off into your hand into like just little pieces, right? It's not repairable. So you could save yourself some time, right? If you want to total that roof and you don't want to do test squares or whatever, I might total that one for wind, right? So let's take another look at it here. So I'm going to see these missing shingles here. And I'm going to say this is absolutely 100% unrepairable, right? See this one, not repairable. Why am I going to, this one's unrepairable. I'm not, I know that the wind, there was wind with the storm, right? You don't have hailstorms without wind. It, I, I, I mean, I'm sure you can, but it, it's it's not that common. It's it's there's going to be some wind with the storm, you know. Even when when the front just comes through, and then this the rain and the hail follows that, right? You get that big blast of wind when the, when the storm first blows through, and usually a storm that's strong enough to produce hail is going to be strong. It's going to have winds with it. I'm just going to say, you know what? I, I see some missing tabs here. I'm going to count up a few of those, call it unrepairable, and total this slope, and I'm going to go to the next slope and do the same thing. Ideally, I want to see this kind of stuff, missing shingles, missing tabs on all four slopes. Um, or, if, you know, if it, like this is a hip or the front and the back or this left and the right or whatever, if it's a gable, um, before I do that, I, I'm looking for the way to total this roof. I want to total this roof in whatever way I can give the benefit to the insured, right? Tie goes to the insured, we always say, you know. Um, so, I'm looking for the fastest way I can total this roof. It's it's pointless to me to spend a bunch of time trying to like figure out if this is a hail hit or not a hail hit or whatever on something like this when I can just like say, you know what, this is not repairable. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's my missing tab right there. I'm totaling the front slope. Boom. I'm done. Right. I'm not jacking around with it. I don't want to waste time. It's going to get totaled one way or the other. I'm going to find the easiest way. Long story short, I'm going to find the easiest way to total it. Right. And this kind of thing right here, uh, you got a lot of granular loss. I would anticipate this is probably a combination of poor ventilation and maybe just a garbage shingle. But again, up here at the top, you can see some tabs missing. I'm buying that sucker, or at least the front slope anyway, because I don't think that's repairable. Although, you know, who knows? It might be. You know, you might be required to do a brittleness test, and it's not too brittle to repair, but this is going to be a hard sell to the insured. I mean, it is what it is, uh, but I think chances are this this one can probably be argued that it's not repairable, at least this front slope. The back slope might be facing north and might be totally fine. It might not be, it might be perfectly flexible shingles and protected from the sun. This is a pretty steep roof. Um, I suspect that this is probably a southward facing slope, the, the other side might be just fine, right? The storm may have come from this way and didn't hit the backside at all because it's so steep, right? So I might not be able to total this one. I might be able to at least get, at least get the front slope. Here's another thing that you see um, that you're going to have contractors and homeowners, you know, if they they get up on their roof, uh, these little cracks on these shingles, it's called crazing, and it's caused by uh, heat and also probably not a very high quality shingle crazing is where the the granular layer and this is we're going to see something in a minute that's similar to this um, crazing is where the granular layer because it's it's brittle right and it flakes off in pieces it doesn't it's not elastic it doesn't stretch it doesn't expand and contract but the matting underneath uh, can expand and contract right uh, or might expand and contract a little bit. And if, if it does even a little bit, then you're going to get these, these cracks on it with the change of seasons, hot and cold, right? 
Here's another picture of crazing. This is not hail damage. Okay. Well, look at the I mean, how can you say the hail didn't do that? Because it's crazing. It's not hail. Okay. That's how I can say that. Scott says, is it possible for crazing to happen more often at higher altitude? I see them often here in Colorado. It could be just that it's not just higher altitude, but also higher latitude, right? So farther north you go, because you do have such extremes. Uh, swings in temperature, it's really, really, really cold in the wintertime, bitter cold, and then really, really hot in the summertime, right? It gets, it gets pretty hot. It can get pretty hot in, in Colorado, right? You know, shingles aren't perfect, and sometimes they come from the factory in bad shape. Learn about defects and improper installation in the next vid right here.